this is the big breaking we are bringing to you on CNN News 18. This on a day when the world has woken up to the news of the most wanted terrorist. And we are talking about Al Zawahiri. The world being eliminated in the Afghan capital. He's, this is a sensational twist that we are now bringing to you. The man who runs the Taliban. We are now going to tell you. This is a CNN News 18. It's a spoken exclusive to the man effectively who controls the Taliban regime and that is Sirajuddin Haqqani. CNN News 18 has spoken exclusively with Sirajuddin Haqqani who happens to be part of the Taliban regime. He's the interior minister of Taliban and the sensational revelation he's made is that, that the Taliban has nothing to do with Al-Qaeda. This was an interview that was recorded just a couple of days ago, before Zawahiri's strike took place. And those are the details we'll be bringing to you in a sensational interview that is and CNN exclusive. We have spoken to the Interior Minister of Taliban and that is Sirajuddin Haqqani. Let's listen in to what he had to tell my colleague Anand Narasimhan earlier. Hello and welcome to a CNN News 18 Global Exclusive. We've got you the son of Mullah Omar, Mullah Yaqub, and now we have with us in conversation one of the most wanted terrorists in the world who's got a bounty in the US, but he's also the interior minister in the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan run by the Taliban. He's the man who controls the Haqqani network. Joining us now is Sirajuddin Haqqani. Mr. Haqqani, first up, thank you for speaking with us here at CNN News 18. It's the first time you're speaking with... Uh, an Indian network, the News 18 network. First up, let me ask you, would you like to clarify your position and where you as Interior Minister of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan stand? And this is for the Indian audience. Bismillah rahman rahim Nahmaduhu wa nuswali ala Rasulul Karim. Bismillah rahman rahim First of all, I thank your country, your countrymen, your channel and the employees of your channel for the interview and I welcome you here. I extend my gratitude and respect. I, at the beginning of this interview, wish to clear all doubts and suspicions that are prevailing in India and world at large. That Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan has come into existence with support of Pakistan. I wish to draw your attention that the last 20 years in Afghanistan was a period of annexation, aggression and ulterior motives of the imperial forces to occupy the land of Afghanistan. Whatever they wish to call it, it was for an occupation. Our holy jihad to free our country from the imperialistic power is our legitimate right. We strive to establish diplomatic relations with India, our neighboring countries in the region and the world at large. Our freedom, our sovereignty and self-respect is our legitimate right. But Mr. Sirajuddin Haqqani, the Indian security establishment, the people at large have several concerns, largely about terror outfits like the Jaish e Mohammed and the Lashkar e Taiba in Afghanistan and the threat posed by them to Indian interests. Do you agree? Afghanistan. Afghanistan was at war with the external forces since 40 years and the last 20 years we have been fighting the world for our legitimate right. Our soil is not meant for foreigners but it belongs to the people of Afghanistan and we have assured to the neighboring regional countries and to the world that the soil of Afghanistan will be used against any of the countries of the world. But Mr. Haqqani, our security establishment, our intelligence agencies have confirmed locations, specific locations with geo uh, uh, latitude, longitude coordinates of Jesh and Lashkar camps operating out of Afghanistan soil. You are in charge of security in Afghanistan. You are the interior minister. So let me ask you this. If at any stage, if the Indian government gives you specific coordinates and locations of these camps, will you be able to act and operate together with the Indian agencies. Their fears do not have any base. We wish to have cordial relations with India and such fears seem to be misplaced and undesirable. What guarantee of security would you provide to Indian diplomatic institutions, projects and businessmen in Afghanistan at this stage when they want to operate normally? 
I have already mentioned previously that such fears are baseless and we have established peace in the country and ensured that everyone in Afghanistan is safe and secure. We have ensured that, that the business establishments, national institutions and foreign investments are safe and secure. We have security forces in place to provide security to these establishments, including all the diplomatic institutions. There is no credible fear for the project's investments. The Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan will prepare ground for their operations without any fear. We firmly assure you. Mr. Akani, another area of concern and a growing concern is the threat of Daesh Khorasan and also very, very critical inputs, confirmed inputs regarding the network of Al-Qaeda affiliates operating out of Afghanistan. What is your take on this? As we have promised to the world, also the Islamic world is in arms against the ISIS. To control and throw it out, Many steps have been taken. With regard to Al-Qaeda, it has no presence in Afghanistan and is no more a threat and the world is required not to feel threatened about the already dead outfit. Some Western forces which are trying to destabilize the country are being taken care of by the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan to control and contain these forces. You say that the Al-Qaeda are not a threat and there is a concerted effort to also quash the Daesh. But what steps are you taking as Interior Affairs Minister and also Taliban to stop Afghanistan from becoming a global terror hub again? Because that's the biggest concern. We have repeatedly said that the Treaty of Doha, which was signed, will be implemented in letter and spirit. And our message to the world is that no such terror outfit will make Afghanistan its center of terror operation. Our security agencies are competent to prevent and to nip such attempts in the bud and we are firmly united against such forces. Mr. Haqqani, you are seen as Pakistan's man in the Taliban establishment. You belong more to Pakistan than the Taliban. That's what people say. How do you describe your equations with Iran and Pakistan? It is the need of the hour that the promises be made to the world, neighbors in the region, in pursuit of these goals, we are striving hard to have friendly and cordial relations with the neighboring countries. Thank you for speaking with us, Mr. Sirajuddin Haqqani. All right, I'll try and reiterate that interview for our viewers. Why it is so crucial is considering A, it was recorded just 15 hours before the strike took place on Al Zawahiri. Uh, it is important to note that this interview was recorded before the strike operation that was conducted in Kabul by the CIA. Also, not to forget, the team of CNN News 18 was very much present on the ground. And on that note, let me also bring you uh, a quick nutshell of what these assurances have been like by Sirajuddin Haqqani to uh, CNN News 18 in that interview. We wish to have cordial and diplomatic relations with India. That's point number one to be noted. Point number two that he's made in the interview uh, is also equally crucial. Let's have a quick look. If I may request my team to uh, toggle over to point number two. Taliban did not come back to par with Pakistan's support. That is what Sirajuddin Haqqani just now said. Point number three, we won't let Afghan, Afghan soil be used against any country. Isn't it ironical on a day when Al Zawahiri has been killed? Now, Al Qaeda has no presence in Afghanistan, no longer a threat. This is the most sensational claim that Al Qaeda has no presence, absolutely. And we all know where Al Zawahiri was killed. He was killed in Kabul. No terror outfit will make Afghanistan its center of operations. That's point number five that they had to say. It rather comes as a bitter irony. Uh, we all know that Al Zawahiri was killed in a CIA operation conducted uh, in Kabul. The US intelligence officers have lashed out at the Taliban because they are very much, uh, they are very much of the opinion that the Taliban was aware of Al Zawahiri's whereabouts. And uh, on that note, let's also try and get in a sense of perspective. For that, I'm joined in by Brigadier Vinod Datta, 
uh, who's the former Deputy Assistant Chief of the IDS. If uh, I think I'll also be joined in by Mr. Ashok Sajnar, who's a former diplomat. Uh, let me bring in uh, Mr. Datta first. Uh, Brigadier Datta, what do you make of this interview? Isn't it <coughs> testimony of the kind of lies the Taliban is peddling? Uh, just because this interview was recorded hours because before Al Zawahiri was killed in that CIA operation, uh, you've heard what they had to say. Uh, Sirajuddin Haqqani said that Al Qaeda has nothing to do in Taliban, that countries need not fear about Al Qaeda's presence as far as the presence in Afghanistan is concerned. What do you make of the kind of lies that are now being peddled? Well, uh, you know, the statement of uh, Sirajuddin Haqqani uh, is uh, quite uh, crystal uh, clear that it is a bundle of lies. Uh, if you uh, recall that uh, when this uh, Doha Accord was signed, right. uh, the Taliban, uh, uh, the second regime of the Taliban started uh, violating the accord right from, you know, even when the ink had not uh, dried up. Now, what is uh, expected uh, uh, from uh, Taliban is that they are going to give you all this kind of lip service. The very fact that he has been uh, killed in Kabul, that he was staying in Kabul, uh, speaks volumes that, uh, yes, they do sponsor uh, terrorism, they do support terrorism, they do, uh, uh, you know, acknowledge uh, the presence of, uh, you know, such like organizations. Right. Second, secondly, they, you know, uh, uh, Afghanistan is in a such a state that they are in requirement of dire finances. They require food grain. They require everything. And the only, you know, organization which can provide them mm. are these uh, terrorist organizations. And they are going to harbor them in the, their country. It is going to be considered as a safe haven because they want money. They want moolah. They want, uh, uh, you know, sponsorship from uh, such organizations. Because none of the, you know, countries or most of the countries have uh, shunned the Taliban uh, second regime. Brigadier so Tata, if, uh, I, if I could also take my next question from Ashok Sajanhar quickly. Uh, Ashok Sajanhar, uh, it's very crucial to refer to what U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken had to say. He said that what... Uh, Taliban is doing currently is in clear violation of the Doha agreement. I'd like your thoughts uh, not to forget that the US uh, intelligence officers have also pointed out that the Taliban was very much in cahoots as far as the Al Zawahiri's location in Taliban or rather Kabul is concerned. No, absolutely. I can't show what you say very, is very right and what uh, Antony Blinken has said has been crystal clear from uh, you know, last uh, year, August, when uh, the Taliban took power in uh, Afghanistan, you know, they have been peddling these lies that uh, there are no terrorist groups uh, in uh, Afghanistan. They do not uh, pose any threat to any country. And uh, what they have really been wanting is international recognition. They've been wanting international legitimacy so that uh, the funds can start flowing in, you know, the funds, uh, Afghanistan funds that have been frozen by the United States and in other countries that they can start flowing in. So this is uh, both uh, Afghanistan as well as uh, their supporters in uh, Pakistan. Right. They have been peddling these lies that uh, there are no terrorists in uh, uh, Afghanistan. But uh, India has been maintaining and even at the, you would have seen Akansha, even at the latest uh, SEO meeting, uh, Dr. S. Jay Shankar, he said there has to be zero tolerance as far as terrorism is concerned. And all the countries in the region have been, are very, are uh, uh, apprehensive of terrorist groups that have been operating here. That is one of the most fundamental reasons why even after one year of uh, the Taliban right. uh, taking over power by force in Kabul, not a single country, neither in the region or outside, has uh, recognized uh, uh, the Taliban uh, dispensation. It, it, it's, it's very so interesting that it's very interesting proof. that you mentioned that one year of pull out as far as uh, U.S. forces are concerned. We are looking at the Doha agreement. Let's talk about it from India perspective. Also, not to forget that we are looking at a very crucial moment for India-Afghanistan relations when India is in fact considering the possibility of reopening its embassy. Having said that, there were some very crucial questions posed by Anand Narasimhan in that interview. Um, he spoke about 
getting assurances? What were the assurances that Taliban would be willing to offer to India as far as the lo terror locations of JEM or LET in Afghanistan are concerned? I'm going to quickly toss over to Anand, who's also uh, joining us on this broadcast. Uh, Anand, please go ahead. Thanks for that, Akanksha. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we recorded this interview on the 29th. That, that was on Friday, just about 15 hours uh, before the strike happened at Ayman al-Zawahiri. Now, there, there were a lot of efforts uh, which were, uh, that went behind this interview because Sirajuddin Haqqani is not an easy man to get. So the efforts of our investigations editor Manoj Gupta have to be uh, considered. The other aspect is that the CNN News 18 team was just about a kilometer or kilometer and a half away from Sherpur uh, region where this strike actually happened early in the wee hours, early, uh, early morning on Saturday. And uh, more importantly, what Sirajuddin Haqqani told CNN News 18 is important. And you have to look at the words, and it sounded very ominous when he said, Al-Qaeda as an organization poses no threat, and it is as good as dead. And hours, 15 hours after he says this, Sirajuddin Haqqani says this, Ayman al-Zawahiri is dead. So this, this uh, is, is it quite ominous. The other aspect is the Pakistanis said Osama is not on our soil and he, they were found in Abbottabad. He was uh, neutralized in Abbottabad. The Taliban say Al-Qaeda is not on our soil and Ayman al-Zawahiri is neutralized in the heart of Kabul. But is there, is there, uh, are there multiple ways of looking at what the Taliban are currently saying? The other aspect is Sirajuddin Haqqani and the Taliban believe that America had no business striking on Afghan soil. America believes Taliban had no business harboring Ayman al-Zawahiri. Now, can both say we are unhappy, we are unhappy, but both knew what was going to happen. Is that a possibility? CNN News 18 had no inkling that Ayman al-Zawahiri was just a kilometer and a half away located and that this strike would happen. But the fact is that this talk when Taliban say that they do not want Afghanistan to be a hotbed for terror or an operation and they want to function individually and work for the people of Afghanistan, there comes a different dynamic. Ambassador Ashok Sajjanar and Brigadier Datta with us. Now, I am looking at the exact context in which we said we had, we, there was a little bit of a delay in putting out this interview because we had to, uh, also the interview answers were in Pashto. We had to try and get the English translations and we had to get the facts right in terms of what was said by Sirajuddin Haqqani because every word was very measured. And what, this is what he told us uh, and, and, and when we played out this excerpt, Ambassador Ashok Sajjanar, he very clearly came out and said that Al-Qaeda as an outfit he poses no threat to anybody in the world and this organization is as good as dead. He says this and 15 hours later, Ayman al-Zawahiri is dead, Ashok Sajanarji. So there are two ways to look at it. One, we can't take the Taliban's word and we can't trust the Taliban because India is very actively engaging with the Taliban establishment because of the people-to-people -people connect and they want to establish people-to-people -people connect. We have resumed diplomatic operations, although not a full-fledged embassy, but visa processing has happened. Our envoys are, are on ground. Our attache is on ground to facilitate, it, uh, facilitate return of Afghan people who want to go back or those who want to come for education or for uh, health concerns. That's one. We are trying to also bring in trade. We are sending them 50,000 metric tons of wheat. We have pressurized Pakistan to open the gates. The Taliban are assuring full cooperation. So when, I, uh, when, when a Sirajuddin Haqqani says Al-Qaeda is as good as dead and 15 hours later Ayman al-Zawahiri is dead. But Sirajuddin Haqqani also said Al-Qaeda is not present on uh, uh, Afghan soil. So there are contradictions and there are also coincidences. How would you like to look at it? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Anand, for these questions. You've raised a number of questions, but before I respond to that very quickly, I would say kudos to you, to CNN uh, News 18 team, to Manoj Gupta and all your members, you know, for this absolutely phenomenal interview you've been doing this. You know, you did all these interviews around uh, the 15th of August last year. Yes. And uh, you haven't missed a step uh, uh, while getting us this interview also. Thank you. Now, coming to it, uh, as far as uh, Aman al Zawahiri uh, 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 and uh, Sirajuddin Haqqani, his comments are concerned. Ji. You know, they have been mentioning this, that there is not a single terrorist group on the Afghan soil. And the countries don't really need to worry. They don't face any threat. Hmm. But of course, uh, the, the world has not believed uh, the Taliban dispensation. That is why, as I mentioned earlier, hmm. no country has uh, recognized them. You know, it's uh, 
question of course of women's rights human rights girl child you know mm. what is the condition the condition of the minorities but i think over and above all that is the fact that uh, countries in the neighborhood and uh, further away are very apprehensive uh, about the presence of all these uh, uh, terrorist groups mm. uh, now uh, i think india definitely feels that uh, all these groups have helped the taliban to so to say come to power in afghanistan so there is no way that taliban would be able to tell these groups whether it is al qaeda or jaish or lashkar or any of the others that now that uh, we have come to power we don't need you and you mm. will not be allowed to operate from our territory from our soil so i think they this is a safe haven that has been provided to them it will continue now you can read a meaning in the words that uh, mm. uh, you know what uh, sirajuddin haqqani said that amana that al qaeda is dead mm. but i don't think he really implied i don't think he had any inkling because i think uh, al qaeda has been a very staunch a strong and a long standing supporter of the taliban and mm. they would not uh, like to uh, give up uh, because that would uh, mm. amongst the world of the terrorists you know mm. that would uh, uh, also impact on their credibility mm. as far as india is concerned what you say we are taking very uh, measured step very small uh, should i say baby steps in moving forward you would know that all the countries in the region whether it is iran uzbekistan except mm. tajikistan all countries in the region are engaging with the taliban whether they have recognized them formally or not whether they have uh, they all of them have their establishments yeah. all of them have their embassies in kabul they are engaging with them what we have been saying is you know our embassy never closed down because there were mm. local afghan representatives who mm. were always manning our embassy and as far as visa facilities are concerned they were being extended mm. to the afghan people now we have moved in in a more proactive manner in terms of providing what you said very correctly anand 50000 tons of wheat to pakistan but also medical supplies yes. uh, whether it is covid 19 vaccines or other essential supplies through iran through dubai mm. we have been providing to them this is a uh, you know our people to people connect that we want to strengthen mm. so again we are uh, saying that it is purely functional reasons that our uh, officials are there it is definitely mm. not any indication of uh, diplomatic recognition and i must say that uh, the statements that the position that india has taken mm. has uh, been a major mm. factor mm. that other countries have not extended diplomatic recognition mm. to uh, afghanistan to the taliban uh, mm. regime in afghanistan otherwise if india so mm. to say you know were to cross the line and uh, Hmm. give indications that we well, are willing to work with then i think it will have a very significant impact on the position that other countries are also Amba ambassador sajan or before i bring in brigadier datta i have a lot of uh, people who are interested and who have worked uh, uh, strategically in this uh, space sphere and i've been watching the developments I have a very interesting question i've got lieutenant general abhay krishna watching the broadcast and he's asking a question saying please ask ambassador sajan har what is the agenda of the us to kill zawahir in the prevailing situation so it's it's not i think basically yeah uh, an interesting question uh, general mm. and uh, let me respond to it from my own perspective mm. i think what uh, the united states has been trying to give the impression is that mm. although it might be focused on the russia ukraine conflict although it might be focused on mm. the indo pacific that is where the major challenges are mm. but it has not removed its eyes of afghanistan mm. security and stability and peace and tranquility in the region Mm. continues to be very important that is why you would have found that uh, the united mm. states has been trying to reach out to countries in the region whether it is uzbekistan whether it is uh, uh, kazakhstan mm. you would have seen that uh, the foreign ministers of these countries were recently in washington dc and they have been talking about it and there have also been discussions on mm. uh, having bases there so that uh, they could carry out the united states could carry out operations Hmm. in afghanistan if uh, the needs such, uh, if uh, such need arose hmm. so i think my response to uh, jan hmm. krishna would be that uh, uh, the united states definitely continues hmm. to be engaged and continues to be uh, very uh, mindful 
of uh, the situation in mm. Afghanistan. It, it doesn't want countries in the region also to think that there is a power vacuum mm. into which uh, countries like right. China or Russia can uh, walk in. Right. But Brig 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 Brigadier Datta, how would you see this and in terms of... Uh, there, it, it's a very detailed interview. CNN News 18 has actually asked about 24 questions. Uh, also, a lot of it hinging upon uh, India... Pa uh, Pakistan Afghanistan equations, Pakistan Iran equations, India Afghanistan equations, and the role that the Taliban would want to play. I'm, I'm just going to go back to what he has said. What Sirajuddin Haqqani says, does this have greater meaning? Because it's it's very strong words coming from a Sirajuddin Haqqani. One would expect it from some of the other leaders, but for the Sargana of the Haqqani network, the Interior Minister of Afghanistan to come out, and I quote, this is exactly what he said. He said, as we have promised to the world, as we have promised to the world, also the Islamic world is in arms against the Daesh. That is, we are, because we asked him about Daesh Khorasan or the ISIS. To control and throw it out, many steps have been taken. With regard to the Al-Qaeda, it has no presence in Afghanistan and is no more a threat. And the world is expected, required not to feel threatened about the already dead outfit. Now, is this a mirage or should we look at it as nothing but, uh, uh, you know, false pretense or... Uh, 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 trying to sh uh, put on a shroud over the reality and to try and uh, like give them cover fire and camouflage? Or should we say that this is slowly the Taliban trying to say that if you can get rid of them, get rid of them. Give us the, give us the entire uh, cover of plausible deniability and uh, go ahead and do what you want to do. Well, Anand, uh, firstly, let me compliment you for that uh, interview. And uh, I, mm. I, I feel so proud that, you know, you have a 360-degree presence uh, because uh, it, it is not a very easy task to get, uh, you know, such a very candid uh, and a, a very detailed interview. Uh, now, what uh, uh, Sirajuddin Haqqani had said, I mean, uh, it, it is a smoke screen. You see, there is mm. a, you know, a lot behind uh, the screen because uh, Taliban itself, I mean, the very fact that they are denying, if you recall uh, the Doha Accord, they have been violating it. Now, the very fact that they are saying that Pakistan had no role in uh, getting Taliban there or uh, getting... Yes, hmm. you, if you see, the ISI chief was there. He was, uh, you know, monitoring the operations. Hmm. Otherwise, uh, the Panjshir operations would have been uh, a success. So hmm. what uh, Sirajuddin Haqqani is saying, it, it is a diplomatic kind of, uh, you know, a statement which he has given. But the reality is something else. Hmm. These organizations, these Tanzims, they have found a, you know, a safe heaven as far as Afghanistan is concerned. Hmm. Now, if you see the importance, the geostrategic importance of Afghanistan, hmm. whosoever controls Afghanistan controls Central Asia. Hmm. And the new strategic equations which are emerging. Hmm. Now, if you see the world has got, uh, you know, uh, two polarities, like one is the American-centric world order and the yeah. other is the Chinese-centric world order. Correct. In which, if you see, the Iran is also, you know, echeloned uh, towards China. Russia is also with them. So this kind of, and, and, and China has its own apprehensions. So the Sirajuddin Haqqani's uh, statement that there is no Al-Qaeda remnant or there is no Al-Qaeda present has been proved grossly wrong. Hmm. So what, uh, uh, you know, Afghanistan is basically looking for is they are looking for finance. They are looking for food grain. Because if you see mm. the internal situation in Afghanistan, it is in a sad state of neglect. Mm. It is pathetic because people are, uh, you know, selling their kids. People are selling themselves to yeah. just to survive. Yes. So all these kind of things, you know, what they require is the, you know, the the roti kapla and makan. Your three buniyadi cheese hai, wo chahiye unko. But unfortunately, you know, not very many countries are forthcoming. So what they are basically looking is that they will be harboring such kind of uh, tanzim such kind of organizations which are going to uh, you know get them some kind of money some kind mm. of help mm. and uh, you see the very fact that you know al qaeda you know it it, it is a still a very very potent uh, uh, you know organization or a tanzim which is capable of uh, striking mm. deep and, and and making an impact in the world mm. so the very fact that al jabari was there I mean, and I'm sure there are no free lunches. He hmm. must have been there with a cost. 
hmm. with some kind of benefit to the uh, uh, you know to the Taliban government. Correct. So but all but, these factors. Yeah. Hmm. No, see, all these yeah, factors come into play, but uh, but the uh, co contrary to what the U.S. narrative is. Here uh, he was there in an oh, in a, in the heart of Kabul, not so far away from the defense area. So it is impossible that a lot of people did not know about his presence at all. The other aspect is, did they just offer him up and say, okay, here he is, we're here to do what you can? The third part is that Joe Biden is under a lot of pressure because he's already copying a lot of flack for the exit from Afghanistan. The way uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, America has not been able to do much. You have China saber rattling with Taiwan. And of course, he's battling research in inter internally. So does this come out as a, as a savior kind of a narrative where he claims a victory here, knowing fully well that we could take him out whenever at our own convenience? So there is also this whole concept of hellfire, targeted attack, and nobody else, not even members either of the Haqqani family or members of the uh, Zawahiri family being harmed. It's only Ayman al-Zawahiri who stepped out into the balcony and he was neutralized. Now, if Ayman al-Zawahiri had a threat to his life and he knew about it, why would he step out into the balcony knowing fully well that he could be targeted from the skies. The Afghans and the Taliban and Al-Qaeda know fully well about these drone strikes. So there are many, many questions, but uh, however, we'll deliberate. But the larger question is, can the Taliban be trusted? Because what they claimed and what has happened, there is a dichotomy there. Is it a coincidence or is it an absolute uh, contradiction to what the claims were? This will remain a subject matter of discussion and debate through the course of the day. It's a big story here. Ambassador Sajanar and Brigadier Datta, thank you very, very much. We're just going to play out a short excerpt of that conversation uh, CNN News 18 had with Sirajuddin Haqqani. Would you like to clarify your position and where you as Interior Minister of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan stand? And this is for the Indian audience. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim First of all, I thank your country, your countrymen, your channel and the employees of your channel for the interview and I welcome you here. I extend my gratitude and respect. I, at the beginning of this interview, wish to clear all doubts and suspicions that are prevailing in India and world at large. That Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan has come into existence with support of Pakistan. I wish to draw your attention that the last 20 years in Afghanistan was a period of annexation, aggression and ulterior motives of the imperial forces to occupy the land of Afghanistan. Whatever they wish to call it, it was foreign occupation. Our holy jihad to free our country from the imperialistic power is our legitimate right. We strive to establish diplomatic relations with India, our neighboring countries in the region and the world at large. Our freedom, our sovereignty and self-respect is our legitimate right. But Mr. Sirajuddin Haqqani, the Indian security establishment, the people at large have several concerns, largely about terror outfits like the Jaish-e Mohammed and the lashkar e taiba in Afghanistan and the threat posed by them to Indian interests. Do you agree? Afghanistan. Afghanistan was at war with the external forces since 40 years. and the last 20 years, we have been fighting the world for our legitimate right. Our soil is not meant for foreigners, but it belongs to the people of Afghanistan. And we have assured to the neighboring regional countries and to the world that the soil of Afghanistan will be used against any of the countries of the world. But Mr. Haqqani, our security establishment, our intelligence agencies have confirmed locations, specific locations with geo uh, uh, latitude, longitude coordinates of Jesh and Lashkar camps operating out of Afghanistan soil. You are in charge of security in Afghanistan. You are the interior minister. So let me ask you this. If at any stage, if the Indian government gives you specific coordinates and locations of these camps, will you be able to act and operate together with the Indian agencies. Their fears do not have any base. We wish to have cordial relations with India and such fears seem to be misplaced and undesirable. What guarantee of security would you provide to Indian diplomatic institutions, projects and businessmen in Afghanistan at this stage when they want to operate normally? Afghanistan ho. I have already mentioned previously that such fears are baseless and we have established peace in the country. 
and ensured that everyone in Afghanistan is safe and secure. We have ensured that, that the business establishments, national institutions and foreign investments are safe and secure. We have security forces in place to provide security to these establishments, including all the diplomatic institutions. There is no credible fear for the project's investments. The Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan will prepare ground for their operations without any fear. We firmly assure you. Mr. Akani, another area of concern and a growing concern is the threat of Daesh Khorasan and also very, very critical inputs, confirmed inputs regarding the network of Al-Qaeda affiliates operating out of Afghanistan. What is your take on this? As we have promised to the world, also the Islamic world is in arms against the ISIS. To control and throw it out, Many steps have been taken. With regard to Al-Qaeda, it has no presence in Afghanistan and is no more a threat and the world is required not to feel threatened about the already dead outfit. Some Western forces which are trying to destabilize the country are being taken care of by the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan to control and contain these forces. You say that the Al-Qaeda are not a threat and there is a concerted effort to also quash the Daesh. But what steps are you taking as Interior Affairs Minister and also Taliban to stop Afghanistan from becoming a global terror hub again? Because that's the biggest concern. We have repeatedly said that the Treaty of Doha, which was signed, will be implemented in letter and spirit. And our message to the world is that no such terror outfit will make Afghanistan its center of terror operation. Our security agencies are competent to prevent and to nip such attempts in the bud, and we are firmly united against such forces. Mr. Haqqani, you are seen as Pakistan's man in the Taliban establishment. You belong more to Pakistan than the Taliban. That's what people say. How do you describe your equations with Iran and Pakistan? It is the need of the hour that the promises be made to the world, neighbors in the region, in pursuit of these goals, we are striving hard to have friendly and cordial relations with the neighboring countries.